Spoiler warning in effect for Loki season 2 and Quantumania. <laughs> Still here? The MCU has been thrust into chaos ever since the end of Loki season 1, when he who remains was unceremoniously murdered by Sylvie. This, in combination of other reality-breaking elements scattered throughout the various films and series, caused the multiverse to expand tenfold, exploding into multiple timelines and possible realities. Enter Kang, a time-traveling villain with keen knowledge of all the different outcomes to various timelines, and the ambition to conquer them all. Loki Season 2 picks up right where Season 1 left off with Loki having been kicked back into the TVA from the end of time. To recap the events so far, he witnesses the TVA in its early days. He meets Ouroboros, an engineer who was responsible for all the technology upkeep in the TVA and wrote the handbook himself, and even runs into a variant of King, going by the name Victor Timely. The temporal loom responsible for weaving all the timelines into a sick singular sacred time stream is overloading and so Loki sets off to on a quest to repair it this time without pruning all the branches so that they too can enjoy full lives he brings Victor timely back to the TVA using his temporal aura to unlock the doors to the loom and as timely sets foot onto the bridge ready to complete the job he is suddenly spaghettified into he who lo mains now recently, a mid-season trailer dropped for the final two episodes in the series. So today, we are here to talk about a few theories we have about what's in store, not just for Loki Season 2, but the MCU's future as well. Before we begin, please give this video a like, share, and subscribe. We are so close to our goal and we appreciate each and every one of you. With that being said, I'm your host Jamie, and let's get into the theories. Number one, this isn't the plan. So far, the show has pointed to everything being part of a time loop, an Ouroboros, if you will, with the beginning and the end being a fixed point that laps itself. What I mean by this is, the way the sacred timeline works is that the universe begins, expands, then collapses in on itself, only to be reborn, expand, and repeat the cycle. Now, we were, are also given evidence that he who remains figured this out, and using this knowledge created a loop within the loop itself, a self-fulfilling prophecy of sorts, where he ensures that throughout each cycle, he always ends up at the top until the very end. In order for this to happen, he needs Miss Minutes and Ravana Renslayer to deliver a TVA handbook with all the recorded information about time travel technology and the temporal loom to be given to his past self so he can grow up studying it and eventually retake his place as leader of the TVA. So if that's the plan, then why did he suddenly get turned into spaghetti when he tried to fix the loom? Well, my theory is he didn't count on Miss Minutes changing her loyalty. Now we learned in a previous episode that Miss Minutes started off as a simple chess AI and monitoring clock. Over time, with each cycle, she was given more and more sentience as he who remains would record his advances in the handbook and then give his past self that new information so he could expand on it. At one point, Miss Minutes was given full autonomy and so far had proven herself completely loyal to him. So he never bothered resetting her memories like he did with the other TVA employees. What he didn't realize though is that she grew more than attached to him. She fell in love and became jealous of anyone else who might steal his attention from her. Thus when she tried to come clean and he rejected her, her loyalties changed and she undermined him. The key moment is right before she is shut down. She puts it in his mind that he will never be this great and benevolent leader that he thinks he is. Which we, as an audience, know is not actually quite true. And it sets him on a path to trying to prove her wrong and being the hero. He was never supposed to walk down that gangway to fix the loom himself. And thus, 
caused a new paradoxical event to form within the TVA. Number two, Kang's true plan. Go back to the end of season one, when we first met He Who Remains. He has been sitting at the end of time for a long, long time, eons in fact, all by himself. He basically lays it all out for Loki and Sylvie right there, telling them that he wants to go experience life. He's tired of sitting here overseeing everything. He wants someone of a like mind to take over so he can do just that. But is this really the truth? We also learn in Season 2 that he who remains, and presumably all the other King variants, are selfish and power hungry, that they don't play well with others, even other versions of himself. So why would he so easily agree to give up his power and position just so he can indulge in some dalliances? No, I think that was an outright lie. Remember how we talked about the sacred timeline being a loop, a never-ending cycle that always resets at one point? We think Kang's true plan is to actually end this loop, to basically wipe out all the other timelines, to allow one singular timeline to expand infinitely, so that there is no collapse, no end. One giant never-ending stream. Each time he repeats this loop, he gets closer and closer to this. And the themes of destiny and fate throughout the series parallel this exactly. In the first and fourth episode of season two, we learn that Loki, through time slipping, embraces destiny by pruning his past self to ensure that he exists in the present. This is similar to what King does in order to always become he who remains, albeit without so much pruning his actual self. We also know Loki doesn't do well with destiny, as we learned from a conversation between him and another variant of himself back in the void. So just like King, Loki wants to alter that destiny, and I think that's what we will see in the coming episodes as he continuously goes back in time to attempt a different tactic for a different outcome. But each time, fate will rear its ugly head and remind him that this is the way it's meant to be. Kind of like the nexus point for Doctor Strange in the What If series. Number three, are King and he who remains the same person? Yes and no. Let me simplify this. We start at point A, the birth of Nathaniel Richards in the 31st century. He grows up, studies technology, and comes across time travel, maybe left over from Banner's experiments during Endgame. Point B, he time travels for the first time. Where he goes doesn't matter, because he ends up somewhere he doesn't want to be. Maybe it's the same storyline from the comics, where he meets Ravana, falls in love, and turns against him. Maybe it's a dystopian future, or maybe just simply a future where he never made an impact. Either way, he travels back to point B and tries to travel a few more different times, each time ending in disappointment. So with that, he comes to the conclusion he should be in charge then, remake the timeline into something he deems worthy, another major theme throughout the series. To do this, he needs to give himself all the knowledge he has gained so he travels back to point B again and info dumps, and then jumps to a point in the timeline where he can roll from. Again, he is continuously thwarted whether by the Avengers, the Eternals, or whomever. Since he uses a device called the probability drive to power his t- time travel, each one of these timelines exists simultaneously, and it gives him an idea. Why not bring them all together and utilize their combined strength to conquer all time together. At first, it's great. They forge an alliance and are successful in conquering multiple realities and timelines. But as we all know, Kang doesn't play well with others. Like Highlander, only one can live. Only one can be at the top. Enter he who remains. He secretly devises a plan to go back in time to point A, kidnap his younger self, and planting it into a new timeline. A timeline he created specifically for his endgame purposes, he dubs as the Sacred Timeline. This new timeline, Point C, is where he adopts the name Victor Timely, 
gives himself the knowledge and know-how to invent time travel and everything else at that point, hidden from the eyes of the other Kang variants, and secretly builds an army, the TVA, to start erasing other timelines. Before the other variants can discover this, he isolates his timeline from the rest of the multiverse and basically wins. As we discussed earlier though, this it didn't fully solve the problem and now he's stuck. However, what about Kang from Ant-Man Quantumania? Where does he fit in? Well, I think that even though He Who Remains succeeded in creating a closed universe, it didn't actually destroy the multiverse. He just created a bubble within it, which means they continued to do battle and whatnot outside of the sacred timeline. The king in Quantumania probably had similar ambitions to take over and was banished to the quantum realm to prevent a he who remains scenario. And while I don't think he died in the closing moments of the film, I don't think he is the final king we need to fear either. Just another variant. Number four, speaking of the bubble. What happens to a bubble when it gets too much air inside it? It expands up to a certain point before pop, it bursts open, right? That's exactly what's happening in Loki season two. Without pruning the different branches, it is not to prevent another king from rising to power or being born or so. He still needs himself to be born in the 31st century in order to kidnap himself and bring himself back to the 1800s and so forth. But it's because there's too many timelines in the bubble it will pop and his universe will then be susceptible to invasion by the rest of the kings. Well, how does that work then with the Ouroboros theory? If we take the idea of the bubble, but combine it with theories surrounding black holes, essentially they are both one and the same. As a black hole continues to gather more mass, it first enlarges before becoming so dense it begins to collapse in on itself. However, once it begins to collapse, it happens so violently that it explodes back out again, thus creating the cycle in the first place, each time growing somewhat bigger and more powerful. Number five, so what does this mean for the main Marvel universe? Incursions, each time a universe resets itself, so to say, each time a new black hole is formed, it grows a bit larger and begins to come in contact with another black hole, another reality. Whichever one is more powerful will then devour the other. Now, I personally don't know enough about the subject to really break down the science, but to simplify, whatever causes these black holes, these realities to form, is infinite, which is why a probability drive is necessary to navigate them, as infinite probabilities would explain infinite formations. For all we know, we are one black hole of infinite black holes trapped inside an even greater black hole, and so forth. So what does that mean? Well, as I understand it, two of the same object cannot occupy the same space and time, and that goes for infinite amounts as well. So either they all get wiped out, or a dominant version harnesses all of it into one. I believe in the latter, kind of like that movie, The One with Jet Li. And this will lead up to the formation of Battleworld and the new MCU that comes out after it. Basically, it's a way for Marvel to reset its own universe with new actors to play familiar characters by saying these are the dominant versions to survive the events. But for story purposes, again, it's very much like Highlander. Number six. So what about the end of time? I think the Citadel is what remains of the Earth of that universe, and since He Who Remains was successful in isolating his timeline, something the other kings so far seem to not have accomplished themselves, his world will be the core to what will eventually become Battleworld. Once things pop off and the bubble is burst, so to speak, one of the other kings may be the one from Quantumania, because remember, I don't think he died, he's just trapped in the probability matrix. We'll take the knowledge he gained from the 616 universe, bring it back to the council as a form of forgiveness, 
and they will begin to create their own pocket dimensions to combine with the Citadel. The way I come by this conclusion is because the quantum realm itself also exists outside of time. It is its own thing, its own reality. So the king that Janet met down there isn't from our sacred timeline, and rather from a different reality entirely. We know it's possible for the realities to have gaps in them, thin spots if you will, for certain characters to cross into one another as seen in the multiverse of madness and no way home. Not all these realities have a king, so that would explain why he who remains didn't care about pruning those events. Number seven, that just leaves the finale. With only two episodes left in the season, I think that Loki will spend the fifth episode fighting against fate, trying to restore the TVA and keep the sacred timeline from exploding, but eventually succumbing to it and having to play it out the way he who remains set it up in the first place. But then the final episode will be the twist of all the ages. Knowing how he who remains keeps himself in power, I think Loki will find a way to do one of these possible scenarios. Go back in time to either give Mobius, Obi, Casey, B-15, Sylvie, or himself knowledge of the future and the events that occurred. Things will play out all the same way up until the initial encounter with he who remains at the end of time. And then that's when things change. Either they don't kill him, upsetting the entire plan, or the Lokis kill themselves, sacrificing their lives in a true purpose, godhood kind of way, or even find a way to imprison he who remains and wipe his own memories, and then take over the TVA. Regardless of the particulars, I think that's where the show will end, re-establishing the bubble around the sacred timeline. And as we mentioned earlier, creating the core for what will eventually become Battleworld. Maybe it will be Sylvie sitting in the throne, or Loki and daring the secret wars. He will once again be seen as a villain. But in truth, he is actually doing everything for good this time. I, for one, cannot wait to see how it, this all turns out. I want to thank you for checking out the video. List your favorite theories down below in the comments or feel free to ask us to expand on anything we've said here today. If you've enjoyed the video, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to tap that bell icon to stay up to date with our latest releases. You can reach out to us on Twitter or X at Studios Fat, or chat with us on Discord, linked below. I've been your host, Jamie. We hope to see you in the future.